Hey guys, hello. We are here ready to read document B on your chapter 10 hyperdoc. Now, we saw that document A was a State of the Union speech by Andrew Jackson, where President Jackson basically says he kind of uses words to make Indian removal sound like a good thing when we clearly know that forcing people out of their home and forcing them to migrate to a location they don't want to be in we know that's a bad thing, even though Jackson is trying to make it sound like a good thing in document A, right? Here, we're looking at the other side. We're looking at document B, and this is a letter by Elias Boudinot. Let's talk a little bit about who Elias Boudinot was. Here's a picture of him. Elias Boudinot was a writer and editor of the Cherokee Phoenix, which was the first Native American newspaper that was published in both Cherokee and in English. So it was a bilingual newspaper. This is one of those examples of why Americans called the Cherokee a civilized tribe. And I say civilized because that's a very derogatory and offensive way of saying that you're not civilized until you speak English. You're not civilized until you adopt white American culture. And so this term where the five civilized nations, they're called civilized again by Americans because they've adopted white American culture. For example, take a look at this picture of Elias Butno, right? If you didn't know that he was Native American, you would have never guessed because his hair doesn't look the way a Native Americans traditionally would, uh, because he's not dressed in a way that a Cherokee would traditionally be dressed. And he's clearly dressed in the white American style. And so that's why they were called civilized. Again, it is very disrespectful because it's implying that if you're native, you're not civilized, you're a savage, which again is an incredibly offensive term to describe Native Americans. Uh, because just because they're different doesn't mean they're any better or worse than you, right? So uh, Boutineau was also a major leader in the Cherokee Nation who believed and fought for the survival of the Cherokee people. As you read, keep in mind why he has these specific beliefs. I want to remind you that right now we're talking about the 1800s, right? But if we rewind a few hundred years when Europeans first started coming to the Americas, we remember that over 90% of Native Americans were died after Europeans came to the Americas for a number of reasons. Many Native Americans died because Europeans were violent and fully massacred a ton of people. But more importantly, we also had that biological exchange of disease. And the biggest disease that killed the vast majority of Native Americans just a few hundred years before these events that we're talking about was smallpox. So Elias Boudinot is going to be hyper-focused on survival no matter what. Because the natives that are alive right now in the 1800s that we're talking about right now, those people are descendants of the ones who survived European attacks, the ones who survived massacre being, you know, uh, the massacres that Europeans inflicted on Native Americans. And more importantly, they're the ones that survived smallpox. Their, their ancestors survived smallpox in the 14, 1500s. And so Elias Butno is going to be super, super focused on survival at all costs, at any cost. So let's get into his, let's get into his letter. So this is a letter um, written in 1837 by Elias Butno, a Cherokee who supported Indian removal and who signed the Treaty of New Echota that gave away Cherokee land. So this tells you right away what type of letter we're reading, right? This is by Elias Boutineau, who is a supporter of Indian removal. You might be thinking, that's kind of weird. Why is he supporting Indian removal, right? Well, let's read the letter. Let's read the letter. The letter is to Chief John Ross, the leader of the Cherokees who opposed Indian removal. So this is a letter from Elias, and he supports Indian removal from their native lands. And he's writing to another native, Chief John Ross, who does not support Indian removal. Ooh, let's see what they're gonna say. Look at our people. They are wretched. Wretched means miserable. Look, my dear sir, around you and see the progress that vice and immorality have already made. See their misery. 
Ooh, right away we're coming in with this strong language, right? Uh, here, vice means sin. So Elias Butino is telling Chief John Ross, look, our people are miserable where they are right now. And he's still being, he's still being as, as polite as possible, right? He even calls him my dear sir. So he's still being polite, but he's like, dude, look at how sad our people are. Look at how sad our fellow Cherokee people are. We got to do something. He says, if the darker picture, which I have described here, is a true one, can we see a brighter possibility ahead? In another country and under other circumstances, there is better prospect. Prospect here means possibility. See how, see how Elias Boudinot is encouraging John, Chief John Ross to think about hope in a different place. We're not happy here, but what if we can go to a different place and be happy there? He says, removal then is the only remedy, the only cure, the only practical remedy. Elias Butino is saying, look, we cannot stay here in Georgia anymore. They're going to come after us. We're going to be miserable. We need to find our place somewhere else, Elias Butino is saying. Our people may finally rise from their very ashes to become prosperous and happy and a credit to our race. He's saying, look, we don't have opportunity here, but what if we move? We could get opportunity there. These are the same ideas that you see if you study immigration. If you study the immigration, the movement of people to different places, you see that immigration happens because people have not many opportunities where they are but they might have opportunities elsewhere. And that's why they move. That's kind of what Elias Boutino is saying. If you come from a family of immigrants, you've probably heard stories of how where you're from did not have the best opportunity for your family, whether jobs, education, safety, security, but perhaps by coming to a different country, they could get those things. Let's keep going. I would say to my countrymen, fly from your life here that is destroying our nation. What is your plan of relief, John Ross? So he's referring to John Ross now. Now he's kind of not being very polite. He's kind of calling out Chief John Ross. Remember, Chief John Ross, he is the leader of the Cherokee people. But Elias Butno saying, what's your plan? My plan is to move because we're going to have a better place over there, he, he believes. What's your plan, he says to Chief John Ross. It is dark and gloomy beyond description. You want the Cherokee to live according to the laws of Georgia, no matter how unfair they are. Ooh. So Elias Butno is saying, look, if we stay here in our native land of Georgia, we're going to have to follow their American laws. We're going to have to follow their American way of life. You want that? Or can we go somewhere else and live our life the way we want to? He says, instead of fix the evil, you would tie our people down in the chains of slavery. He is really calling out the chief here. He is coming at him hard. He's saying, look, if you stay here in Georgia, you're essentially going to be treated like slaves. If that's what you want to do, you stay here. But I'm leaving. That's what Elias Butno is saying. The final destiny of our race under such circumstances is too revolting to think of. He says, Elias Butno is saying, I don't even want to think about what's going to happen to our people if we stay here. The way we'll be disrespected, the way we'll be you know, fought against. He says, take my word. It is sure the end of our race if you succeed in preventing the removal of your people. Ooh, Elias Butno is saying, look, I want to be in our native land. But if we stay here, we're going to die and the Cherokee people will cease to exist. Elias Butino is focused. He is hyper focused on survival at all costs. Now, whether you agree with him or not, that's up to you. But there is no doubt that he is focused on the survival of the Cherokee people. Doesn't matter if it's here in Georgia. Doesn't matter if it's there in Oklahoma. Doesn't care where. As long as they survive, he says. Oops, sorry. There's a bell. There's a little announcement. Take my word, it is sure the end of our race. If you succeed in preventing the removal of your people, he says. There will come a time when there will be a few of us left as reminders of this brave and noble race. May God protect us from such a destiny. Whew. All right, well, hopefully 
Uh, reading this together will help you answer the questions in your slide. Good luck.